Patty Bonas, better known at St. Paul's as Rob's mom. I have been enjoying church services and coming to St. Paul's since before 1964. I am thankful for the wonderful pastors we have, the best choir in the world, for Flathead United Methodist Camp, and for all the warm supporting friends and support we have here at St. Paul's. Thank you. Hi, home members. I am so thankful for all of the wonderful trails that we have around Helena. Hi, Helm members. I am so thankful for these wonderful outdoor experiences that we have. And I'm thankful for my relationship with God. I'm thankful for the wonderful people of St. Paul's and Covenant Churches. And I'm thankful that my daughter Morgan discovered Covenant Church. Thanks, Covenant. Have a great day. Bye now. Good morning, and welcome, Helena United Methodist Ministries. My name is Rob Bonas. I usually prefer to stay away from the front side of the camera. Tom Woodyard and I work behind the scenes on the tech team as we do our part to video, edit, and help create our worship services for us all to enjoy as we strive to stay connected during these unique times. I am also grateful I live in Montana and get to enjoy the abundant scenic views and numerous opportunities for outdoor activities and recreation year-round. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and if you choose to do so, please create your own video 
record yourself, and send it to sound at stpaulshelena.org. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Helena United Methodist Ministries. We are two United Methodist churches collaborating and cooperating in ministry together. Each church offers the Helena, Montana area unique ministries while sharing pastoral staff. I'm Pastor Sammy Pactoner, and St. Paul's and Covenant United Methodist Churches are glad that you joined us this morning in this time together. We believe that all people are God's beloved children, and we are so led to share in this opportunity and come together and worship God and share our faith. We have many ways to connect and stay connected during this time. We would love it if you would let us know that you're here. Below in the description of this video, you will find a link to our digital attendance sheet. I invite you to greet each other in the chat box of this video, or even shoot a text to your buddy and let them know that you're thinking of them. If you would like to share what you're grateful for through video, pick a spot and record yourself saying your name and where you live and what you're grateful for. Send your video to sound at stpaulshelena.org. The link is in the box below, and we will add it to our future worship experiences. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram to discover new classes and events taking place. We are in the process of planning new and exciting ways to connect socially, even in the midst of being physically apart. So be on the lookout for new and exciting ways to connect this summer. This YouTube channel has previous worship services available, along with weekly children's messages and Sunday school lessons from Miss Kelly, our children's ministry director. On our website, humchurch.org, that's H-U-M-M-C-H-U-R-C-H.org, you will find a place to submit your prayer requests and subscribe to our bi-weekly email blasts, plus many other updates. All of the links that you will need for this morning can be found directly in the box below. Now, as we prepare to join our hearts with God, I invite you to breathe deeply as we receive this morning's music.
You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Sharon Wolf, and I attend Covenant United Methodist Church. This morning, let's begin with a unison prayer. We'll move from that into a prayer together, and then the Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. Loving God, on this day you sent your Spirit so that you could abide with us always, comforting us, guiding us, convicting us, and filling us with life. You gave your spirit to every person of every tongue and every nation so that all may know your love and be gathered into your embrace. We confess that we do not always embody your radical, inclusive spirit. We build barriers based on race, gender, orientation, and ability. And we have woven these barriers into our laws our cultures, and our daily lives. Empower us through the power of your spirit to tear down the walls we've built, to heal those that we have wounded, and to shout the worth of each person to the world with the same holy fire that you gave your disciples in Jerusalem and through which you gave birth to your church. Amen. Please pray with me. Please take a deep breath with me now while we offer our silent joys and concerns to our God. We breathe out fear, anxiety, discouragement, and anger. We breathe in hope. And Lord, please remind us with every breath, every breath, to leave space for your spirit in our hearts and our minds. Help us to live our faith. Help us to remember your presence. We're not in this world alone. We're not facing this pandemic without you. Your hand is in our lives. Thank you for the joy and the trust that only your spirit can bring with the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now as he taught his disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, kids. Pastor Margaret here, and we're going to have a special message just for you today, because today is Pentecost, which is a big, long word that really only means 50, five, zero. And why it's a big deal is because it is 50 days today after Easter, after Jesus was raised from the dead. And so today we celebrate the birthday of the church. So I'm wearing my happy birthday hat that I made. Can you see? I wrote happy birthday on it. And I have this fun rainbow tape. Maybe you can make a hat too, just with some paper and markers. And maybe if you have some stickers and tape, you could make a birthday hat today. And in a minute, we're going to sing happy birthday to the church because that's what we do, right? But in our, in our Bible story today, it talks about how it seemed like when God sent the Holy Spirit to a group of people who were from all over everywhere and they didn't speak the same language. God gave them all of a sudden the ability to talk to each other in ways that they could understand. And God was so powerful and so present with them, it felt like there was a wind. <sighs> blowing through the room where they all were. And it seemed like there was fire, flames, 
And it was really, really dramatic. And everybody who was there remembered it as such a powerful, powerful time. And so today, here's my little church. We're celebrating that the church was born at Pentecost because God did an amazing thing of bringing all kinds of people from all over everywhere and made them one family. And we are still one family as the church. Now, I know that usually at a birthday party, there are presents, right? And maybe even cake. Well, I don't have any cake to give you, but maybe if you're parents or grandparents say it's okay, maybe you could make birthday cake um, sometime this week. Maybe you could make a birthday hat. And I would invite you to think about what are some of the gifts you get from church? What are some of the ways that church really is a wonderful place and a good thing in your life? And maybe to talk about that with the grown-ups and the kids around you, okay? So that's your homework. But for now, I just want to invite everybody to sing with me. You ready? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Yay! And before I send you off to find your hat making supplies, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the church and for Jesus and for the Holy Spirit you sent us as a gift to help us be able to love and live in the ways that Jesus taught us. Amen. Thanks. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Listen to what I say. 
In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Anna Velen, and today is Pentecost Sunday, the day that God gave us the Holy Spirit and the day that we mark as the birth of our church. It's an important holiday, but I found that it's one of the lesser known in the Christian year. I can ask just about anyone what we celebrate at Christmas time, the birth of Christ, and similarly, I get a fairly quick response when I ask about Easter. What do we celebrate then? Jesus' resurrection. But Pentecost, that one elicit some pauses, maybe a few head scratches. I'm not sure why this particular day is so easily swept under the rug because the story behind it is among the most exciting in our scriptural canon. We find the disciples sitting in a house in Jerusalem. They aren't the only ones gathering. This event falls on Shavuot, a Jewish holiday commemorating the giving of the Torah. People from all over are congregating in the holy city to celebrate. The mood is a bit less celebratory for the disciples, however. Today's story takes place 50 days after Jesus' resurrection and a short time after Jesus' ascension into heaven. The atmosphere, I can imagine, is still a little tense. Resurrection or not, the disciples have watched the authorities arrest and execute their teacher, and they were likely wondering if they'd be next. For over a month, they spent the good part of their time huddling together, trying to keep a low profile and sitting with their anxiety and their confusion. And to make matters worse, Jesus has just left them again. For good this time. Suddenly, a gust of wind burst into the house, violently, as the author describes it. Now, I grew up in Florida, in the path of many hurricanes, with winds that shook my childhood home. When I read this story, I do not picture a sweet summer breeze. No, this is the kind of wind that we shuttered our windows against to keep out. Next, tongues of fire appear and sit on the heads of each person in the room. Of all things, God decided to send the Holy Spirit in the form of fire, a pretty dramatic choice. Fire is pure energy with the potential to do some major damage. Did the disciples, I wonder, feel the searing heat on their scalps? Did they yell in surprise? Did they try and swat the tongues away and put them out before they spread? We don't know. But I cannot imagine a scenario in which looking up to see a flame hovering right above your head is not terrifying. In the days leading up to the ascension, Jesus promised not to leave his disciples as orphans. He told them he would send his spirit to dwell on earth and abide with them always. True to the promise, the Holy Spirit enters each of the disciples before they even have a chance to panic. Endowed with the ability to speak in different languages, they burst from the house into the crowded city. Everyone around them can hear their native tongue being spoken. Some brush it off. This strange scene must be because of some serious day drinking. Others are astounded. And at the end of this frightening and chaotic but ultimately amazing day, many come to faith in Christ because of what they've seen. So many that we now consider Pentecost to be the birth of our church. We often overlook the role of the Holy Spirit in our faith. A colleague of mine once called the Holy Spirit the ugly stepsister of the Trinity. And a five-year-old Sunday school student of mine once asked me if the Holy Spirit was a spooky Halloween ghost. Truth be told, of the persons in the Trinity, the Spirit is probably the most difficult to understand and even more difficult to teach on. But with such a backstory, is it any surprise that the Spirit would refuse to be pinned down? 
You know, we often use the image of a docile dove to represent the Holy Spirit, but the ancient Celtic Christians preferred the image of a wild goose. Untamable, unpredictable, and downright unruly. The book of Acts continues to cast the Spirit as a source of great power and the giver of spiritual gifts. Frequently, when the apostles are preaching or teaching or healing, they are described as being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a force to be reckoned with, and it continues to be so in our own lives. The Spirit animates us and excites us. I am sure you've heard someone describe a particularly powerful worship experience or an animated preacher or a person of great devotion as Spirit-filled. The Spirit gives us our unique gifts and leads us to serve in ministry in the world. The Spirit compels us and gives us the courage to step out in faith in ways that we might not otherwise have the strength to do. It makes a way when there isn't one. The book of Acts tells us one thing. The Holy Spirit changes everything. It turns things upside down and inside out. Because of the Spirit, the disciples go from huddling together quietly and anxiously in the same room to blasting outwards into the city, bold and filled with holy fire. God is not just God in heaven or a temple or incarnate in one human being, but everywhere and in the heart of every believer. And this is what we celebrate each year on Pentecost. This Pentecost, however, is a bit of a paradox. Normally, I would be preaching in a sanctuary surrounded by all of you rather than in my basement surrounded by noisy cats. The sanctuary would be done up in red and orange and yellow rather than just me and my red cardigan. We might sing happy birthday to the church during children's time. Then we'd join in choruses of come Holy Spirit or Spirit of the living God together. We only have to read the first line of this passage to get a sense of how different this Pentecost is. The disciples were all together in one place. So much of this story's power lies in the communal aspect of it. The intimacy of gathering in one room and sharing the same experience. The ability to create connections with strangers despite language barriers. But this year is a little different. Because of COVID-19, we don't get to meet together in person. We've just come out of several weeks of shelter in place where we were mostly confined to our homes to slow the speed of the pandemic. Even now, as restrictions begin to lift, we look a little more like the disciples right before this story begins. Huddled anxiously in our houses as our normal continues to shift. And that's not all. In the Bible, the Spirit makes a traumatic entrance. It blows the roof off, forces the disciples outside the confines of the house and into the streets. They are loud and they are bold and they are full of life. And the Spirit we read about is powerful, it's dynamic, it's reckless. And today, when we talk about how the Spirit moves in our own lives, it's often that this Spirit is what we think of. The wild goose of the Celts imagining, emboldening us to go into the world and serve. If this is the Spirit that we know and love, we might be left wondering where that Spirit is now. The original Pentecost couldn't happen today. The disciples would not be able to gather together, nor could the faithful gather in Jerusalem for the holiday. The disciples couldn't go out blazing into the streets, and if they did, those streets would be empty. We might feel as though there is no room for the same holy passion among us right now. It might seem as though the pandemic has snuffed out the holy fire. Yet, while the Holy Spirit is a mighty force that sends us into the streets to share the good news, the Holy Spirit is also a giver of wisdom. The Spirit is what guides us when we are morally confused and convicts us when we are morally compromised. If this is true, then it stands to reason that sometimes the Holy Spirit convicts us to be still. Because right now, being still, staying inside, and choosing not to gather, and generally doing the opposite of what the disciples did in our story today, is how we serve our neighbors. By doing what we have to do to keep them safe. The same spirit that descended on Pentecost abides with us in the middle of a pandemic, empowering us to make difficult choices that we must make to be a part of the solution instead of part of the problem. For though we cannot gather together physically, we embody Pentecost in recognizing that we are all connected and all have the responsibility to care for one another. 
we will still worship. We'll still praise God through music, and we'll still celebrate the birth of our church, even when the church looks a little different right now. And we'll still be together, in some ways more so than we ever have been. This is not to say that our situation isn't difficult and that this Pentecost will not be a lonely one for many of us. But among so many other things, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Jesus promised that he would not leave his disciples alone, but would send them a companion. And on Pentecost, more than anything else, we celebrate that God loved us enough to come and dwell among us every day. In the hills and in the valleys, in our houses, in the streets, in the chaos, and in the stillness, when we are together, and when we are apart, and even when we are lonely, we're never alone. Amen. What we need is past few months, we have seen our world and our neighbors shift drastically to care for the body of Christ. In order to protect the most vulnerable, church has looked a bit different. Though we are not closed, we have transformed and changed and proven that the church is truly not the building, but the people. Our staff here at Helena United Methodist Ministries have been working faithfully and diligently to adjust and, dis and to discern how to continue serving God and God's people. If you are in a position to share during this pandemic, every dollar of your generosity at this time will directly help both Covenant and St. Paul's continue to be voices of love and grace, even when we cannot be in our physical buildings. This type of connection allows your gift to multiply far beyond our reach alone. Below in the description, you will find the link to the giving page of our website. Checks can be sent to either church, and you can also give by texting, as you see on your screen. We thank you for your generosity at this time. Sing. 
when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. And don't leave the Spirit of the sing on. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord, empowered by the Holy Spirit to love one another as God has loved us. Amen. <laughs>